Today's topic, the optimal order to save and invest your money as a high income earner. That's right. We're going to walk through it all because I know you like a systematized process when it comes to what do I do with my money? So we're going to cover it all from the emergency fund all the way down to low interest debt and literally everything in between. 401ks, 403bs, taxable accounts, HSAs, 529s, Roth IRAs. We got them all covered in a nice order just for you. So stay tuned. That's all coming up next. Okay, before we hit the first one, let's just add in some basic finance 101 here. No matter which buckets you're aiming for as we start to walk through all of our buckets here, remember, the biggest part of long-term financial success is consistency, control your emotions, don't interrupt. Consistency, don't let your emotions get involved, don't interrupt. You can follow those steps. You should be in a pretty good spot for a very, very long period of time. Let's get into our very first one, the emergency fund. Boring old cash, but cash is vital on so many levels. But when we're thinking through what steps should we be hitting, the first stop in savings is that emergency fund. You got to push some money away for that rainy day because it's going to happen. And if it never does happen, good for you. The psychological benefits that come with just having cash put away is a huge, huge benefit. So the first one we always start with whenever we're building a plan for our clients or just talking through this, you know, through our blog or through YouTube or even on the podcast is that emergency fund, you know, getting that set up, hitting your number. Now, this video is not going to be about how much you should have in your emergency fund. You know, you could Google search this and you're going to see three months of expenses, six months of expenses, three months of income, six months of income. That number can vary. And, and you know, we say this a lot for our clients. We're always aiming for more or less that number that they feel comfortable with. We don't want them to go too low. We don't want them to go too high if their plan doesn't look good, right? You don't want to lose too much opportunity um, on the cash side of things. Now, rates have improved a lot, but ultimately we're hoping for longer term investing that the stock market is always going to beat those cash numbers, right? But first step in your order here, simple, beautiful cash, the emergency fund. Next stop, 401k, 403b match. I'm going to add in the 403B here because again, our major community is physicians. Physicians usually, especially in the academic space, are going to have that 403B. If you're all familiar with the terms 401K versus 403B, they are very, very similar. They're pretty much the same thing. They even have the same limitation, uh, you know, for 2024, that 23,000. You only get 23,000 in total to go to one or both of those accounts in total. So very similar. It just really depends more on what side of your employer on a more of that private versus public side of things. So first one you're even for is the match. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of tough love here. If you're watching this video and you are a high income earner, in all likelihood, in most phases of your life, because there's always going to be course corrections, you should be maxing out your 401k 403b. Now I know the word high income earner can mean a lot of different numbers in a lot of different places in this country. But for the most part, if you're going to title yourself with that, you should be able to get through the first few buckets here without really ever thinking it. But to keep it simple, to keep a nice order to it, first stop is get your full employer match. And that is the simple part of what we call, you know, free money, right? Your employer could say that, hey, if you put in 6% of your salary to the 401k or 403b, we're going to give you a 100% match on the first 3% or a 50% match on the full 6%, which turns out to be a 3% match. But the first thing you want to do is make sure you're getting the match. Now, if you're watching this video and you're saying, hey, my employer doesn't offer a match. Well, move it to the next step. Then there may be a reason where you don't need to worry about that. But for most of you, again, using that high income earner description, you're maxing this account out, whether they have a match or not, because you want the tax benefits, right? You're likely in a high tax bracket. We're trying to bring that down here. So that's where we're going to utilize that full match. So whatever you can put in there, whatever you need to put in there to get the full employer match, check with HR, but aim for that as the next stop. So emergency fund, 401k, 403b match. Next up, bad debt. Now I'm going to put a little bit of a balance here because one of the most common questions we get 
especially in the physician world is, you know, should I be putting everything towards student loans or should I be putting it towards investing? And very rarely is it all or nothing answer. It's usually a balance. And with student loans in particular, right? If you're going for public service loan forgiveness, you do not get any bonus points for paying more on your loans, right? You want to keep it to the minimum. Now, if you have private loans and you have really high rates, you know, maybe we have a conversation here, but when I use the term bad debt, there's usually two things that I'm looking at. First one, you could probably guess it, credit card debt. Credit card debt is not very good debt. It's very high rates. It's really just a form of handcuffs in the terms of personal finance, right? So we really wanna focus on that. Now, would I take everything and put it towards that? It depends on the rate, it depends on what your plan looks like, but I, you know, we put it third on our list here for a reason. It is certainly a priority. And then the other one I'd put in there is a bad car loan. Now, historically, car loans will kind of shift with overall interest rates where rates were pretty low a few years ago, they're starting to creep back up again now, where you're starting to get to the point where, hey, if you have some extra money, you might wanna put it towards that car. But as a high income earner, if you're still maxing out some of these other buckets that we're gonna to get to, then I'd probably come back and even get more heavy on it. So it could be one of those where you add an extra 50 or an extra 100 now, that number could be large or small depending on your balance, but it might be at this stop here, just adding a little bit extra and then as we work through some more numbers here, then you put it towards there because cars really a way of life. Now, if you went out there and you should have been driving the Camry, but you said, hey, I'm a first year attending physician, I'm buying the Porsche, you know, we might want to put higher emphasis on that. But if you have a fair, reasonable car, you're making payments on it, you know, we might not get too crazy here, especially if the rate is low or fair. But third on the list here, bad debt. We want to make sure we're making that a priority, but you're still probably going to balance some of the other ones we're going to cover here, but bad debt is not ideal. So let's start to work that down a little bit more aggressively than what we would have. Next stop on the list, I want you to finish off 401k or your 403b. So maxing out the 401k 403b. And I know I noted this earlier, but if you're going to take the title of high income earner here, I hope that you can max out this account or get pretty darn close to it year in and year out. And even our next one that I'm not gonna give away yet, but I hope you can really cover those. When I describe it, uh, when we build a plan, you're trying to build that foundation, maxing out a 401k or 403b, in addition to what's next, I'll give you a hint. That's what we're really aiming for is building that foundation. But at this point here, emergency fund looks good. You're getting the employer match. We're putting a little bit extra emphasis or keeping an extra eye on that bad debt. Again, really credit cards, maybe a bad car loan or a personal loan. I probably should have added that one in there as well. Those are what I would label as bad forms of debt. But now we're topping off that 401k for a 3B. All right, next up, I gave it away, but the Roth IRA. I really want you filling up that Roth IRA or getting as much of it completed, filled up as you can. As a high income earner, remember, more than likely you have to do something called a backdoor Roth IRA. This video is not gonna describe how to do a backdoor Roth IRA. We have plenty of videos that will walk you through that. Simple Google search will give you everything you need there. But you can get money to a Roth IRA. That's probably one of the biggest misconceptions out there that, oh, I make too much money to save to a Roth. Not true. You have to add an extra step in there, which is what we get the very fancy name called the backdoor Roth IRA. But you can do a Roth IRA that is certainly next on our list. That is one of our favorite accounts for many reasons, but that's our next stop. Fill up that Roth IRA bucket. All right, at this phase, this is where we've covered the foundation, right? That's where a lot of people, if you're getting there, we're in a really good spot. Now, we're gonna add more to it, but that is what I really label as that true foundation. From this point, it can really go a few different ways. I'm going to give it my best order that I can provide to a mass audience, but also we've built financial plans for over a decade. I've seen pretty much every situation you can see, uh, literally hundreds of physicians we've worked with. We've seen a little bit of everything. But next on my list would be the HSA the health savings account. Personally, this account still doesn't get enough love in my opinion. This account has so many benefits to it. It is so unique in how you can utilize it. But the main caveat is, right, you have to be in a plan that's HSA eligible. That needs to be a high deductible health plan that needs to be HSA eligible. But here's why I love the HSA. The HSA has a triple tax benefit. What does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. That means that when you put money into it, tax deduction. While it's in there, it is tax deferred, meaning that while it's invested, if it's pumping out dividends, it's growing, you're not getting any tax bills, right? It's it's growing tax deferred. And when you pull it out for qualified medical expenses, we call them the QMEs, completely tax free. So it has a triple tax advantage to it. And as a high income earner, we have plenty of separate videos on HSAs. 
ideally you put money in there and you don't touch it you don't interrupt it and then you can get it invested because hsas most hsas today now allow investing in there so you can really let this thing compound and snowball over many decades so you have a large beautiful bucket of money sitting there for you when it comes time to pay for medical expenses because unfortunately you're all going to get older and unfortunately those medical bills are probably going to go up but that's where this hsa can be so powerful next stop on the list i'm going to keep this one a little bit more open-ended but i'm going to call this other pre-tax savings now full disclosure there are times when our clients plans look really good and we may not go crazy on this bucket we might skip the bucket altogether but if you're looking to really load up to either increase your odds of a better financial independence, lower your tax bill, lower your student loan payments, right? Pre-tax, EGI, student loan payments, go down. So if you're going for public service loan forgiveness, that is, right? That's the key there, right? You're, you're ultimately only trying to lower that if you're going for public service loan forgiveness. But other pre-tax savings, and here's what I throw into this bucket, a 457B. Usually you're going to see this more academic medicine, not always, but remember there is a government versus a non-government 457B plan. Chad, what does that mean? We don't have enough time in this video, but in our other videos, we already have it covered for you. It's there. And I'd also put in here any type of profit share. Now, this is likely going to be if you have 1099 income, right? If you can control your solo 401k plan and get in the full 66,000, that's a 2024 limit. Make sure you're Googling the most recent numbers there compared to the 23,000. That's just the difference of a profit share. Now, there's a calculation that goes into that. Again, I won't bore you on this video, but profit share, pre-tax contributions, really nice thing to take advantage of there. And then if you have a lot of 1099 income, we might even start to get real crazy here, even bring in something called a cash balance plan. Uh, and this is more of what we'd label a defined benefit plan compared to what a 401k is, 403b is what we call a defined contribution plan. That's as nerdy as I'll get today on this one. If you don't understand that, it doesn't really matter. That only matters to our nerdy side, but just keep that in mind. A lot of 1099 income, try to fill up that profit share bucket. And maybe with good research, a good review of things, a cash balance plan could also be a good addition there, but see if you got any other pre-tax buckets you can take advantage of. Next up, the 529 plan for the kiddos, right? So if you're watching this video, you have young kids, or you know if you're a grandparent and you wanna help the grandkids out, 529 plan would sneak in here. Now, here's the thing about 529 plans. Not every 529 plan is created equally, meaning that some have great tax benefits, some have really no tax, but literally no tax benefits. I should say maybe, literally they have no tax benefits. So the 529 plan, there are benefits to it regardless. So even if there are not state tax benefits, you still get tax deferred growth while it's in there. And then when you go to pull the funds out, again, qualified education expenses in this one, completely tax-free when you pull those out. So 529 plan, I'd put that on there next. 529 plans have gotten more attractive, right? A few years ago, they added the $10,000 per year for K through 12. So if you're a high income earner, we're sending the kids to private school, kind of a neat addition there. Now we try to, we tell our clients at least, we try not to utilize that, right? The main benefit of the 529 plan is invest it, let it grow, and then use it for those college years. And then the other new addition we have is now that you can start to move some money from a 529 plan to a Roth IRA following certain rules. You guessed it, we have a video on that one too but there are neat ways that you can do that. And that's brand new. That's brand new for 2024. So the 529 plan kind of continues to add neat features as the government, I would say, rewards us for being proactive on our kids' education. So I'm gonna plug in the 529 plan here as our next stop. All right, next stop as we come down the home stretch now is the taxable account. Taxable account, sometimes call it just your traditional brokerage account, right? This could be an individual account. It could be a joint account. But the beauty of the taxable account is you invest the funds. And the main benefit here is ideally lower taxes, right? This is where we're more worried about capital gains tax as opposed to ordinary income tax. So that's the main draw here. But with that, there's not any pre-tax deductions, right? So that's why it comes in a little bit lower down the list. Now I will say, I love the taxable account. It adds in a lot of flexibility for a lot of different phases of life, especially for those of you that are saying, hey, I wanna be financially independent at 50 or 55. The taxable account is really important. If you just want flexibility in your investments, right? Taxable account is a great tool, right? If you don't want to put everything in retirement accounts, that taxable account could move higher up your, your ladder here, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, the main benefits here is it's just flexible. You can get the money whenever you really need it. Do you need it now? You need it five years from now? 
Now, keep it in mind that it will produce a 1099 every year. No matter how tax efficient you are, you're likely going to get a 1099 a year. But the beauty today is you can build these pretty tax efficient. You know, whether you're utilizing ETFs, exchange traded funds, uh, if you're going to use some bonds in there, you could plug in some municipal bonds. Still want to have bond diversification, but muni bonds or municipal bonds can help you lower that tax bill. So keep that in mind. Taxable account, call it a taxable account. It's taxable every year, you're going to get 1099. So build it tax efficiently. And truth be told, this account ends up becoming one of the largest, if not the largest accounts for many of our clients, because there's no limitations on how much you can put into it. We're like our 401k, 403b, 2024 limits, we're limited to that 23,000. If you wanna go put 100,000 tomorrow into your joint account, you can. You wanna put a million dollars, you can. You wanna put five million, have at it. So that's where it's flexible and this account can really grow over time. So taxable account comes in there as we head down the home stretch. Second to last stop here, I'm gonna call this one other investments. Main things I'm looking at here are real estate and businesses. And when I say businesses, I'm thinking more of our physician client who has a friend that's created a medical device and may wanna invest in that company. Not creating your own business. If you're creating your own business, truthfully, I, I could probably move that one higher up the list. Obviously, as an entrepreneur, I love entrepreneurship. Now, there's plenty of you know pros and cons to that but I'm more or less thinking you investing maybe some side money into a friend or a colleague, or maybe a well-researched other business venture. Again, physicians are our people. Real estate is always a very popular topic, whether that's through the form of syndications, maybe REITs, or owning rental properties outright, which is our favorite just for more control, better tax benefits, but it's also not passive. I love when they call it passive income and I go, it's everything but passive. It's gonna require some heavy lifting, but other investments would sneak in here at the end. Again, with all of these, we can move them around. We really can, it just depends on your plan. But if you're sitting there and you're just looking for some general guidance on, hey, how do I work my way through this or how should I be thinking of it and then making it your own, you know, this is a good spot, but you could also make an argument to maybe move this up the list depending on what your goals are or your current situation. Last but not least, low interest debt. The plan looks great. You filled up all your buckets and you're still sitting there with money left over. Good problem to have, kudos to you. What do we do? Well, this is where we can start to maybe look at some low interest debt, right? You know, if you hit the mortgage lottery and you have a mortgage under three, 4% today, feels pretty darn good. But just because the rate's low, and I can tell you that, yes, historically, you should do much better in the stock market. Maybe you just don't like debt and that's okay. Let's go after it, right? We got some money left over. Let's get that mortgage paid off a little bit sooner. Or maybe it's a, a low car loan or maybe low student loans that we're not going for public service loan forgiveness, right? This is the very bottom of our ladder here, the very bottom of the totem pole in terms of, hey, we've covered all the main things. We have extra left over, what do we do? Low interest debt would pop up next. But also, you know, I try to preach this to everyone, work-life balance. At this point, if you filled up all those other buckets and you just wanna spend some money, go spend some money, it's okay. Book the trip, do that with the kiddos, take the spouse, significant other out somewhere, right? Do something fun. It's okay to invest in yourself and your, your marriage and your kids and your relationships, it's okay to just go have fun because you did a hell of a job just getting through all these. And a lot of people can't even make it through all those. And then they get to this point where they're thinking, now what, right? So also take those victory laps when you can. I put this at the very end for a reason because I could say that, and if I put it too high up there, you take it too, too crazy, right? So low interest debt is last on the list, but I also plug in a bonus one for you. Don't forget to have some fun as well. And there you have it. The optimal order to save and invest your money as a high income earner. I know I said it a few times, but you can move a lot of these around. It's not perfect. It's literally, we could build five different financial plans. Every one of them could have separate steps here, or maybe some are just changed in the middle or at the top or at the bottom, but you gotta make it your own, but this should give you a good idea of the order to follow. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you got a lot out of it. Maybe you learned about some new accounts. Maybe you didn't know about some benefits in there, but. Follow these to the best of your ability, but also customize it for yourself. As always, thanks for hanging out with me for the last 15 minutes or so. If you have not subscribed to the channel, you can subscribe here. You click on the bell icon. You also get a notification every time we release new content. And as I've noted in some of our past videos, we are now up to weekly updates for you. So thank you for tuning in to all these videos. Also drop us a comment. You wanna see something? You wanna see a case study? Is there a topic? A question you've always wanted to ask a CFP. Now's your chance just down in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you on the next video.